of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. So AccuWeather tells us intervals of clouds and sunshine and afternoon thunderstorm and 82 degrees today. And, well, we're going to have that kind of weather for the next several days and maybe through most of next week as well. Chance of thunderstorms each day, but some sunshine too, nice warm temperatures. What else are you going to do with your time? Then go to the 158th Indiana County Fair. It is back. And so is Ed Nerig back with us. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Ed, good morning. Isn't it good to be back at the fair? Good morning, Todd. It sure is. And we're back and we're, everybody's enjoying what they're doing over at the fairgrounds and having a good time that, because we're back. It takes a while to get the fairgrounds ready to go for this fair. There are a lot of things, a lot of little jobs and when you've been off for a year and you haven't had a fair for two years, uh, it probably there's a few more jobs. That's correct. And you've got to pull back on your memory a little bit to remember what goes where and <laughs> things like that. Uh, you're right. We've been working out there since the 1st of August. We started on the 1st of August and the crew has been working and the office staff has been in there off and on. And uh, now they're there full time and we're, we're, uh, we're just getting ready to go. Everybody's excited, really. Well, they need the old timers uh, like you who've been there once or twice before to remember exactly everything that needs to be done. How many fairs is this for you? Well, I I don't know exactly how many fairs I started when I was ten, so that must mean mean about seventy, I guess. But uh, uh, I've been on the board for forty four years and uh, manager for sixteen. So you haven't been there for all one hundred fifty eight. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them tell me I have been. <laughs> but you remember the old days and uh, the way the fair was, and, and you've been there to help it grow into what it is today, and, and it really is uh, something for all of Indiana County. I think that's one of the things that people miss out on, that this really is for all of Indiana County and then beyond the borders to bring people from other counties here. That's correct. It is a, it is a, a, an a, a, a event for everybody, uh, uh, countywide and, and beyond the borders of the county, as you said. And we get a lot of people from uh, from out of the county. In fact, we have a lot of exhibitors from out of the county. We have machine dealers from, I think, five different counties coming to the fair. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're all back this year. Uh, uh, they tell me that it's going to be limited in what they can display because it's not available, and I, and I understand that. But uh, they support this, and they're coming back again this year. That's great. You get to see all of the equipment uh, and the other exhibits. The, the food vendors, of course, these people were hit hard by the pandemic, too. And so for, for the people who are there at selling food, uh, offering crafts, whatever it happens to be that they're doing at the fair, they finally get to get back and do it this year. It's a really, really meaningful thing for them. That's correct. And, and there are many of them uh, setting up or set up there already. Uh, and, and they are, most of them are back. There was one or two that uh, have gone out of business that we know of, but the rest are back, and uh, pretty much uh, everybody's excited in that area, too. Looks like the fair again, doesn't it's, it? It's starting to look like the fair, and in another day or two, it'll smell like the fair. Yeah, well, that's a wonderful <laughs> smell. Now, now, you had harness racing in the last couple of days. Yes, we do. yesterday we had started harness racing. There will be another uh, uh, race today. There was, I think, 12 heats yesterday, and I think there's 13 scheduled for the day. Yeah. And uh, they're getting the track ready again now as we speak. That starts at 2 o'clock this afternoon? Two o'clock is uh, post time. That's correct. Yeah, and exhibits are coming in, of course, now and uh, pretty much until the fair gets underway. That's correct. Uh, we start taking exhibits at twelve o'clock today, and all the uh, all the exhibits for in the buildings will come in today. They'll be judged tomorrow, and uh, the buildings will be open for a limited time on uh, Sunday, our Faith and Family Day. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we'll have our church service in the evening, crowning of the Queen, late afternoon. Yeah, yeah. But so many things happen on this weekend of the fair. Before the fair officially kicks off, there are a lot of things that happen on the fairgrounds. So you got a lot of things happening this weekend. That's right. Even tomorrow, we, we start pulling tractors, I believe, at 9 o'clock in the morning, and we'll pull... Mm -hmm. As long as there's tractors there to pull, and that'll be probably late tomorrow night. To start with the antiques and work through the farm classes. One of the things that people most look forward to about the fair, in addition to the nightly grandstand events, uh, are the, the, the various different shows that happen uh, and, and the exhibits that come. And uh, this year there's something called uh, the Jurassic Kingdom. That's correct. It's a, a dinosaur show, and it will be up on the uh, football field up below the swimming pool. Uh, we've had small shows in the past. This is a, 
uh, a little bigger show, and uh, the kids just love shows like this. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun for the kids. Uh, so, so that's something new for the fair this year. What are some of the other things that uh, you most look forward to fair week? Well, I, I just, I guess, what I, I don't have time to see all the exhibits, but what I look forward to most, I think, is the people. Just to uh, have them come and, and uh, enjoy the fair, enjoy themselves. Uh, one new thing that uh, we're looking forward to this year is on Wednesday night, our ATV drag race. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of interest been shown in that, so we're hoping that's a, a big uh, night for us at the fair. Yeah, yeah. Um Cheer night, uh, a band night, used to be on Tuesdays. It's it's now later in the week, right? Uh, it's still on Tuesday. Band night will be Tuesday. Cheerleader night will be Thursday. Okay, that's that's what I was confused yes. about. I, I, yep. That was my fault there. Uh, but uh, there's something in front of the grandstand every single night. Oh, that's correct. We start off tomorrow night with the 4x4 four four truck pull and uh, just work through the week. Uh, Friday night, of course, will be our big rig, our smoke and noise night. And then Saturday will be our demo derby and... Uh, and uh, uh, in the evening, there'll be the triaxle dump truck yeah. pool. Yeah, about that. In our last segment, last half hour, we were talking with Bob Pollock uh, from the Extension Service uh, and making the point, and Bob was making the point, that this really is an agricultural fair that means so much to the kids in 4-H, to everybody involved with the livestock there. And people who go for one thing, maybe a grandstand show, uh, or, or maybe they go just to eat or to, to visit with friends or whatever it happens to be, if they would mosey on over to the livestock barns and watch the judging that goes on and see some of the ways that these kids have uh, put into the work they put into their animals, they might have their eyes open and find themselves absolutely fascinated by what goes on. Yes, I, and, I, and that's a good point, uh, Todd. I wish they would wa wander through the barns, through the buildings, these kids that have made, whether they've made a craft, or whether they're showing an animal, uh, just the enthusiasm they have uh, about their projects. It, it's the end of the summer, the end of their project uh, uh, year, and uh, they've worked hard to get where they're at. And uh, uh, then, of course, we have a, our cheese auction on Thursday night and mm -hmm. uh, our uh, livestock auction on Friday night. And one of the other things I'd like to draw attention to maybe is the kitty farm. That's a, a, a I'm, I. I don't like to blow our horn, but I think we got the best in the state, oh, yeah. uh, and we've been told that uh, it's a, a building where it's the old rifle range, and it's a, a building where aimed at preschool and early early elementary school kids to teach them about agriculture, and it's a hands-on exhibit. And uh, I've been told by some parents who take their kids in there, they have to go there last, or they can't see any of the rest of the fair. <laughs> They might even get to meet a goat or something like that's that. That's right. That's right. Well, absolutely. That, that sounds like great fun. Uh, of course, there is a petting zoo. That's correct. There's a petting zoo up on the football field. This year we have a chain carver. He'll be located down at the lower end, uh, of the west end of the f uh, fairgrounds down uh, uh, near the racetrack somewhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, people always, always want to know about um, getting into the fair. Um, where they park, um, does it cost them to park, uh, what's the price to get onto the fairgrounds? You have all that information, too. Uh, yes, I can I can give you that. Uh, there's parking, of course, in the hospital lot, uh, the, uh, and then the, uh, the old Bilo lot. Mr. Kowalczyk is uh, good enough to let us use that for the week, and the hospital lets us use their field behind the Citizens Ambulance. There's parking on the hill up in the area of the swimming pool, and then... Uh, when everything gets filled up, we fill the infield, and and it is free. Parking is free. Uh, the cost of admission is eight dollars to if you want to go into the grandstand and and go anywhere else on the fairgrounds. Uh, carnival rides will be that's uh, separate from the fair. It has been for the last couple of years, and uh, they I don't know what their cost is. I think it's a ten dollar ride all day uh, fee that they have. Mm -hmm. um, there is a weekly pass, a walk, what we call a walk-around pass you can purchase. That will get you six admissions for $20. Uh, whether you want to go six times yourself or take the whole family for one night, it's yeah. a $20 admission for the walk-around. Yeah, and for any office that wants to go and have some lunch over there, they can do that. with. Uh, That's correct. We don't these. start charging until 2 o'clock. Uh, the, the lunchtime crowd is uh, able to get on the, crowd, uh, on the grounds, have a... 
a stromboli, a hot, a hot sausage, whatever they want for lunch, and uh, and leave and go back to work. They are good to go. Ed, we're going to have you in with us to visit uh, through the course of next week as well, a number of days. I want to thank you for coming over today. It's good to see you again. Good to see you, too. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160, 22 minutes after 8 o'clock. And our, car, our health cycle coming up next, we start it with Jeff Flock and the coronavirus crisis. Coronavirus crisis. I'm here outside the Ford Explorer plant in Chicago, one of dozens around the world that have periodically been shut down as a result of the chip 